and welcome to That's So Yet, part one in the two-part episode where we talk about pronunciation in this one. Now, first of all, let's talk about what is yet. Well, yet is a dialect and an accent that's spoken here in New Orleans in the metro areas. And the reason why we got the name yet is because there's a common greeting here where we say, hey, where yet? Meaning, hey, where are you at? And we're not actually asking where you are like geographically, we asking where are you in life? How you doing? That's what where yet means. <sighs> what I can't stand is in Hollywood when they film things down here in New Orleans and they have us talking like we from like Georgia or Mississippi, Alabama. We don't talk like that. We don't talk with a draw. Other parts of Louisiana maybe, but not down here in New Orleans. That is not how we talk. Speaking of New Orleans and how we talk, notice I just said New Orleans. We don't say Nolans. That is not how we say it. If you come down here and you say Nolans, we're going to know instantly you're not from here. Okay. First pronunciation our A's. Now, there's many different ways we say our A's. Um, it's really close to a New York accent, but the difference is we say a lot of ah ah, where they do a lot of ua ua. For instance, like water, cod, hardly. We park the car by the water and walk to the park. The second thing, depending upon where the A is, We'll pronounce it with either a ear or an ear. For instance, like the ear would be more like hand or man, man as. You always want to keep a can of spam in your pantry because that was all floods. Now, as far as the ear, that's more like mad, where, scare. See, there's a little bit of an R at the end of that one. Um, but like I said, I'll talk about R's later. Okay, speaking of which, about how other people would pronounce it as opposed to how we would pronounce it, I can imagine somebody saying, that scared me so bad, it left me scarred. Where we would say it, that scared me so bad, it left me scarred. There's the, let's see, how can I explain this? That scared there's the air scared me so bad it left me scarred so there you have both the air and the r now which is funny because let me get my marker now to explain this further you have scar C-A-R. That's got the R in it. You put the E on the back, and then it becomes scare. So you got the score, scare. Here's where I talk about the R ending that I was talking about earlier. All of our ending R's turn into a A. Uh. For instance, like shower, computer, navigator, monitor. Here's a word that everybody argues over what's the best way to say it or what's the right way to say it. That sauce that everybody questions the pronunciation for, I say Worcestershire. Now, when it gets to words like chair, guitar, that's when you draw on what I was talking about previously with the R, with the A's. Because you got like chair, guitar, especially with the guitar. You're putting the AR, I mean the AW with the R, and then you're not putting the R, you're putting the R. Uh. So, R. Uh. TH. This thing should have its own video. There's so much going on with the THs, whether it's Starting a word, ending a word, it's a lot. So, 
We'll start off with the beginning. TH starting a word sounds like a D. Simply because when you say this, that, you're really putting your tongue out this, that. Since we talk so fast and we chop and slur everything, we're putting our tongue right behind our teeth. So it's instead of a th, it's like a th, th, and that's where you get that D sound. So you have things like this, that, these, and those. When it's preceded by an M or an N, and I wrote that backwards, you, and I'm going to talk about this later, the D gets a drop from the N, and then, which, like a word such as and, you're going to drop the D, and then it's going to be this N, then you can take that N, and then replace the TH. So it's going to be this and that. So, for instance, you'll have... This and that. The D goes away. Now you have this and that. You're going to take the N is going to come here because the TH goes away too. And you're going to get this and that. This and that. Now, there's a phrase that yet say more than we yet. It is this phrase called your mom and them. And it stands for your mom and them. I'll explain about that in another video. But this is such, I guess you could say an iconic phrase because we say it so much. And there are so many yet rules that play into it. I know in a lot of languages, when you're trying to get, like, a language or an accent down, there's always this one thing that you say, and it kind of jump starts you into that accent. Your mom and them is a perfect thing. If you want to get into the yat accent, just start it off in your head, say, your mom and them, and then poof, you're, smooth, you're smooth sailing for now. Next one. When it's preceded by an S, it turns into a Z. And then starts the next word. For instance, what was the sentence I have? These are the roses that I was talking about. These are the roses that I was talking about. But when you say it fast, these are the roses that I was talking about. These are the roses that I was talking about. Not those. These are the roses. Here's an interesting one. The L's. And not so much the L's in the middle of a word, like yellow or follow, talking about the ones that end a word, such as, like, call, owl, bowl, fool, fall. What happens is, the L doesn't get fully pronounced. It's not L, it's L. Kind of gets swallowed into a weird W sound. So, I'm full. Now, if it's coming before a vowel, such as yellow, then it'll be pronounced. Um, if it's coming before, if it's coming before a consonant, then usually it gets swallowed. We have a city here called Shelmet, but because the L is being followed by a consonant, it gets that swallowed into a W sound, so it winds up being called Shalmet. If you really want to stick that thick accent on there, you don't pronounce the soft CH. I hear a lot of people here calling it Chalmet. I mean, they really chew it up. A good example would be the whole car fell in a pothole. The whole car fell in a pothole. So there's a lot of swallowed L's in that one. I think I talked about this earlier, and I said I was going to talk about it later, but the D or the ING endings, they get dropped. Um, if you have something like this right here, it's not a hand, it's a hand, H-A-N, the hand, like I talked about before, <laughs> that's overpronounced, but it's hand. There's a trend going around, not a trend, a trend. 
the D is there. It just is a really silent and deadened. That's more like a better description. A deadened D rather than just a full drop. It's there. You put your tongue in position. You just go trend. Not trend. And like I talked about before with your mom and M. Your mom and M. That, we should go back to the TH section on that. Um, now, taking those few words that I talked about before, such as hand and trend, uh, the teacher wants you to hand in your homework. That's fine. Um, I'll be handing it in tomorrow. See, the D is pronounced there because it's not the end of the word. You still got that ing that you have to deal with. So it's hand in. Trend in. See, it's... What's trending these days? Obviously not the yad accent, because if so, Hollywood would get it right. Um, now, sometimes, uh, if we talk about the no ending in the D, or the just dropping the D, then sometimes it doesn't even fully come out in a sentence. Like sometimes I'll say, hand them in. I said that naturally, hand them in. The D kind of turns into an N. Just drop everything. Uh, this is just a little something thrown in, but words such as ground, we say ground, like more like ground, not ground. Something that's ground is had previously, you previously grinded the thing, so now it's ground. Ground is something you walk on. Now, there are such things as a grounding rod. We say other similar things like brown, frown, versus gown and mound. Oh, here's a fun one. Inflection. This is what makes yet yet, I think. Um, we chop words in weird places and we truncate onto the decks. Well, I talked about that with this, that, these, and those. And the other thing we do is we have a tendency to drag out words and speed up another one. So like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a good example of that would be, uh, I'm going to talk about this in another video with up the road and down the road, as far as cardinal directions. But down the road, we don't really say, like, oh, it's just down the road. Because so many people down the road talk blah, 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 like that. They have a tendency to say down the road. Where do you live? I live down the road. I'm going down the road. I'm going up the road. And so they drag up and speed up. So a good example of that would be, I told you it's not going to work. That's how some of the people talk down here. They do. I told you. No D. Drop the D. I told you. It's not going to work. Now, there's a difference between attention and anger. That's all in a tone. Everywhere else, when you want to get somebody's attention, you say, you know, hey, so-and-so, hey, Rebecca, hey, Julie. But uh, here we do like, Julie, Teresa, Jamie, like that. Attention looks like this. Jamie. It's very, uh-uh. Just very even up. Now, when you're angry, you mad at somebody, a lot of other places, they will say the first and middle name. Like, uh, Jamie Ann, get over here! We don't do the, the first and middle name. We don't. It's the inflection. Now, it's kind of similar to the, ah, uh, but there's a little more to it. It's more like, Jamie! Teresa! Dana! Jimmy! It's got a very ah uh, to it. So when you're angry, it's ah. Uh, that's what the angry tone looks like. That's the inflection. So it's just ah. Uh, then you know they're just trying to get your attention. Hey, this is a you're gonna get beat. If you don't stop what you're doing right now, this is I'm about to come over. Ah! 
<laughs> That's when you know you should just stop. Here's a section of what I like to call old yet. There is <laughs> modern yet? I don't know. The yet. I grew up hearing and then there's the yet that you hear the very, very old people speaking. Like my grandpa and my old aunts and all of them. They used to speak what I consider old yet. Because you listen to them and it's like, oh, that sounds so old. And this is mainly people that were, you know, mainly alive around the 40s and the 30s, 50s, stuff like that. Think Streetcore Name Desire. This is how they would speak back then in New Orleans. And of course, as people come in, there's other influences that kind of change things up a little bit. But back in the day, all, most T's, or T-H's, were pronounced like T's, like tree instead of three. I told the tree times. There's another thing my uncles used to say a lot, is not the truth, but the truth. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth now. Nah. New Orleans is set up into wards, and the one closest to me is the ninth ward. Now they have... The ninth ward, or the upper ninth, and the lower ninth. Nobody really refers to the upper ninth as the upper ninth. That's just the ninth ward, and then the lower ninth. So, we don't say ninth ward. They say the ninth ward, and it's the lower ninth. That they, that's the lower part. It's never the upper ninth, it's always the lower ninth. But all of it's the ninth ward. And whenever I try to say it, it always comes out the night ward, because that's how I grew up hearing it. Another very interesting thing that will make you sound old, very old-timey, is the O-I and the E-A. The O-I and the E-A. And like, pearl. For instance, you have the words girl, pearl, bird, see it's got that er sound, and then you have toilet. Oyster. Oil. They like to switch those. So instead of it being girl, it's goil. Instead of pearl, it's poil. Boyd. Turlet. Ersta. Earl. I'm trying to think of a saying I came up with. So there was this guy who went down to the little night and he was talking to this goil who was telling a story about how this boyd stole her poils and he uh, the boy had dropped them in a turlet. She didn't realize did it because she was busy heating up the earl to fry her ersters. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, another thing old-timey people say is, and I still hear people say it, and it kind of, it's very cringy. They say it, and it's like, please don't say that. Um, is instead of saying sink, they say zinc. I do not have a kitchen sink. I have a kitchen sink. I don't know about anybody else. I don't, it's made out of aluminum that I know of, not zinc. So in conclusion and wrap up, that's pretty much the lowdown on how to pronounce things for the ad accent. Now, if you want further material, there is this great book called the Yat Dictionary. I'll put a link to it in the description below, and then you can check it out for yourself. It's got a lot of stuff I, you know, went over today, but it's got so much more. And it's a highly, highly recommended read if you really want to get the Yat accent down. And not only does it have the Yat accent, it also, like, the words written in the accent, it also has idioms, like how we talk and things we say, and that is very important, too. There's another good source. It is a comic by the late, rest of soul, Bunny Matthews. I absolutely love this comic called Vic and Natalie, and it's basically a comic of these two very quintessential yats, and they just talk about New Orleanian stuff, food, film, just everything going on around the city, and everything is written out in the yat accent, so just by reading the comic, you can get a handle on what the accent sounds like in your head. Just read it out loud. It's fun. I love it. I don't want my camera cut off. Anyway, it was so close to the end too.
anyway, I'll see you all next time in my next video. Look forward to it. It'll be a part two, and it's going to go over everything that we say. Yadisms. See you next time.